Hey guys, Dennis from DC Supershine here. Thanks for tuning in. We are working on a pontoon today. And pontoons, you know, I get a lot of questions on how to polish a pontoon. It's basically one big long tank. So if you look at my tank video on, uh, that I posted a couple weeks ago, it's basically the same process. The only thing that changes when you're doing pontoons is how you do your finishing at the end. I just work from weld to weld to make sure there's no lines. We'll go through that as well. And then on the inside and the front, um, you know, I normally use my high-speed sander to do all the sides, of the, the sides of the tanks. And then on the inside part where you can still visually see it whenever it's in the water a little bit, I do it with a palm sander. It just makes it a little easier. Now one thing I did want to mention is I am going to use a high speed sander to do the outside tunes. Now you can still use a palm sander if you don't have a high speed. It works, just takes a little bit more time. Now one thing to note and remember is when you're doing high speed, always a constant flow. Don't stop, don't stop moving because if you stop moving too long, you can groove into your aluminum, some, especially in the lower grits if you're working with 180 or 320 or something like that. Um, it can leave some grooves, and then in the sunlight, you're gonna see those grooves, okay? So just make sure constant, even flow movement.
Okay guys, so the sanding is uh, completed on this section here. I did 320, 400, 600, and 800. Um, now we're gonna jump to the polishing step. Today I'm gonna be using a purple pad. It's just some, uh, some old stock that I have. I'm using up some of the old stock that I have, so I'm using a purple pad today with my DC Super Shine Heavy Cut Bar. Great to clean up the pad whenever needed. And of course, safety gear. So mask, earphones, and gloves. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my 6000 today. Uh, we're gonna work in sections. So basically, I like to work from weld to weld, but I'm gonna cut all that into several sections. And at the section, so I, I probably work about uh, 14 to 16, 18 inches wide. So this will probably be four sections, and then I'll blend it all in after, and then do my finishing. So for pressure, when you're applying pressure, it's something we haven't really talked about too, too much yet. Rule of thumb is about the weight of your grinder. So this grinder here weighs almost 14 pounds, 13.6 I think it is. So that's the perfect weight. So when you're applying pressure, about 15 pounds of pressure is more than what you need. Now what, how, you, how you can tell is just how much of the pad is actually touching the surface. Okay, so if you're just, just touching it like that, it's not enough. You want to apply a little bit more pressure, so you're getting about two inches, two to three inches of contact with your pad on the surface whenever you're using a pad of this stiffness. This is a medium cut. Okay guys, so the cutting step is done. Now as you can see, I worked in sections and it leaves these lines at each section. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend all that in. I'm basically gonna walk the tank with the machine and do one long pass to get all those lines out. I'm gonna rake. I'm gonna use the rake and clean my pad and then do that. It'll remove all the black and it removes all those lines and then it'll be prepped for my finishing. You could finish it just like this. Those lines are a lot harder to come out if you just finish it right away like that. So I always do a blending process, just cleans everything up really nice, makes the finishing a little bit easier. So for finishing, I'm gonna use a flannel pad and a blue finishing bar from DC Super Shine.
mission is completed. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like me on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll catch you in the next one.